Do you think you need a huge fan base to be able to do a crowdfunding, or can it be done with a much smaller audience? That's a great question. Instead of asking, do I need a fan base, ask the question, do I have a crowd? I created 5K in 30 days. My goal was actually to create $30,000 in my business. Connection plus urgency equals currency. Jess Eva L. Artist, crowdfunding coach, and singer songwriter. That's the thing with crowdfunding that I love. You have to figure this out when you promote the album anyway. When you market it, you know, six months from now, so why not figure it out now and get paid faster? On a daily basis, we see artists struggle to monetize their music and find something to sell to their fan base and work on their music full time. Today, I am blessed to be speaking with Jess Ava Allen, who is a crowdfunding coach and an artist herself. And she famously raised $5,000 in 30 days through her own crowdfunding for her own album. And Jess is going to go deep into her three-step process, how to do the strategy, the tactics, and the mindset to raise that much cash from your friends, your family, and your fans. So sit back, get cozy, and grab a pen, because you're going to need it. Honestly, when I came across your brand, I was fascinated by this idea of crowdfunding before your release is even out. And most artists typically think of doing it the other way around. They accumulate the cost first, and then they reimburse themselves after. Can you even just talk to what is a crowdfunding coach and how did you get into this idea of <laughs> helping artists fundraise before they need it? Yeah. So back in 2020, I was creating an album and then pandemic hit, lost most of my income. So that's really where it started. You know, fast forward, in, I created 5K in 30 days. So I had ne never done that before. <laughs> But again, it was because I had coaching and I almost stopped halfway through, but my coach really challenged me at different points and said, uh, you, you know, you could stop, but you'll go back to the life you had before. That's powerful. So, Very yeah. Powerful. Yeah. And do you want that or do you want something different? And then during that process, how did you kind of distinguish between friends and family who are not seeing this as a donation and a charitable kind of uh, case, but more so they're investing in the art and they're going to get various things on the back end, whether it's bonuses or revenue splits or credits or what would they getting in exchange for their contribution, I guess. I love that. Well, first of all, I want to point out the people who actually support you, they're your, they, it's almost like sussing out your inner circle. It's almost like sussing out your super fans because the people who don't, who actually invest in you, um, you want to invest back immediately, right? And so it's it's a fast way to get paid, but also assess out who's actually your supporter, right? So I want to say that first. Um, the second thing is, you know, I talk to everybody. <laughs> I just, I didn't um, prejudge. I didn't, you know, make a decision for someone before I asked them. And I talked about this in one of my lives recently, um, the, the, the correlation between dating and crowdfunding. <laughs> yep, <yeah. laughs> because we've all been asked out on a date very awkwardly and weirdly, and maybe it was cute, so you went with it anyways, but we've all been, it, it, like, we felt pressured, right? That, that's where a lot of people have a lot of fear, is they think that their friends and family are going to feel pressured to do something, and they're going to re face rejection. None of us like rejection you know, the core of us. Um, but what I really did was the, the way I asked them was in a no pressure kind of like, hey, care about you. I want you to know first and really like honoring people through the process. And so I asked everybody and then I said, you know, there's totally no pressure. Um, I just want you to know. And even if you, you know, just give me support, love on me through this process, I'd be so, so grateful. So there's always something that someone can do. Um, and you always want to ask, you never not want to ask <laughs> you know, when you, when you paint the vision and you tell people what you're doing, always ask them to take some kind of action. It's a, it's a service to them. It's not a, it's not a, um, disservice or pressure. I love two things that you said that I want to pick up on that. One is that you asked everyone, no matter what, and you didn't decide for them, like you said, yeah. but also it was, you didn't just plaster it on your Instagram stories or on your feed and saying crowdfunding click if you're interested you went to yeah. them i love this yeah. fact that you 
you because it's a process and you you can't expect them to come to you sometimes you have to go yeah. one by one through the lists and through the scoping calls and make sure they feel like they're included in this and they're buying into something bigger than themselves and not just thinking oh you need money but i get nothing in return why i always feel this about crowdfunding someone's like i don't know i need to finish my album i'm like okay good for you why yeah. would i right and i think right. it's where you're painting this picture i know we're going to come on to storytelling because that's a key component but the why should i is the question that needs answering a lot of the time right right and uh you know that's the thing with with crowdfunding that i love you you have to figure this out when you promote the album anyways <laughs> but when, when you market it you know six months from now when it's finished you got to figure this out anyway so why not figure it out now and get paid faster is the idea here your story is number one um and that's what connects with people and and gives them a reason one reason why obviously you have to turn it around and talk about them too but you know number one is sharing from your heart and saying hey this came about because you know the pandemic hit uh I, i've been facing these fears that i'm not good enough and i'm tired of it i'm done with it so I'm I'm going to finish this EP with or without you. I just wanted to know if you wanted to come with me because I care about you. And then you 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 have to like include them, right? Like, hey, um, Ayaz, I know I know we just met, but you are incredibly inspiring. I love the way that you connect with people and the way that you are just so generous with how you 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 just are so generous and um, you help a lot of people. So I just wanted you to know. There's totally no pressure, man. I just want you, I, like, it'd be cool if you came with me. I love the framing. I love it. It's almost like, compliment, compliment. It's the soft ask. I'd appreciate it if you could. But if you could not, even your moral support and your energy is also yeah. appreciated. Yeah. I love that yeah. de like delicateness, like you said, but also it's giving them the choice. They, like, they want to donate rather than a pressure for, I need you to donate now because you're my cousin because you're my auntie, because yeah. you're my best friend. Like, yeah. we went to high school together. It's not that you should, it's that I would love you to. I think that's what I'm hearing you're saying. It. Yeah, absolutely. And and it's like, hey, this is, I'm going to go on this adventure anyways. Like, you don't, you don't have to come, but like, come as you want. Come as you want to participate. Come as you choose. Um, and and I think that's that's what we all want at the end of the day. We want to be a part of something that's beautiful and inspiring, but we also don't want to be forced into it, right? <laughs> like the greatest uh, missions and leaders. And I used this uh, as an example on my story the other day. It was like um, Martin Luther King Jr., right? I have a dream that the world would look like this. Do you relate? Do you want to come? Because I'm going to do it anyway. I wanted you to take a minute from this episode to tell you a bit more about the DistroKid app which is available on the Google Play Store and the Apple Store. This is an amazing way to view all of your analytics from DistroKid, all your streams in real time, look at your earnings, then cash them out from your wallet directly into your bank account, upload the lyrics, the metadata, change all your releases, or even process a song upload directly from your mobile phone. They've taken all the amazing benefits off the DistroKid website and built it into the app. If you're not yet a member of the DistroKid family, I'll give you a 7% discount using my link, which is distrokid.com forward slash VIP forward slash all about helping. And then once you're on the Musicians Plus package, which is what I highly recommend, then download the DistroKid app and log in on Google Play or the App Store. I promise you, you won't regret it. Huge love as always to the DistroKid family for sponsoring the entire season two of this podcast and empowering smart artists with their digital tools. This is this is the side of what I really wanted to get into with you. Like when I'm planning an organic social media campaign, I talk heavily about storytelling. Like I would yeah. be talking about, you know, the relationship or the breakup or the meaning of each track of the album. But I'm getting the sense that's a slightly different story than why you're looking for funding. So the meaning of the project has similarities between why you're crowdfunding, but it can also be I have this vision, maybe I'm just supposing, I had this vision of a live show. And in order to do the special effects, in order to get the band, in order to deliver the best show possible, I need some funds. 
And in exchange for your donation, you're going to get a ticket to this show and you're going to get X, Y, and Z. Can we get into that? Like, how do you start structuring the offer of like, yes. in order for me to raise my 5K, this is what you'll get as your contribution? Can we yeah. start that? That's a great, that's a great thing. So I see it as three tiers. Uh, tier number one is your big overall vision for the world, right? Okay. So we're going to go macro and then go micro because I, I think you're talking about micro. But you have to say, I have a dream first, that the world would look like this. And the reason I have this dream, and then you go into your story, mm. is because back in 2020, I lost everything. Uh, I'm facing all these fears that I've never faced before. I believe other people face these fears too. I want to create a world where people are fearless and courageous. Right? You, so you start there. I have a dream. Like, this is what the world, I think the world could look like if we do it together. Right? Right? And then, of course, you, you know, the third tier is your your story. I just went into it. Like, this is how it impacted me. And this is how I, I think we can do it together, right? Um, and then you've got your, your, your tier underneath, which is, by the way, you could participate in these three ways. Number one, you could just, you could just uh, give me love. And um, I'm working with an artist right now. You know, we, we said standing to be a light in the world, in a dark world, is very hard. So <laughs> standing to be light in a very dark world, right? So I need your prayers and support, right? So that's number one. The first way you can support me is just check up on me. This is a process where I'm facing a lot. So just check in on me. Um, and then number two, you know, you can say I'm, I'm, then you can go into the details, right? I'm putting on a live show. I believe this live show will impact people. It will turn hearts, you know, whatever you want to say. It'll it'll make people um, feel that they're validated in their fears and in they're they're okay just the way they are. They can accept themselves. I believe that this live show is going to create an experience where people feel loved. However you want to say, whatever your brand is, right? That's kind of my brand. Um, but I, be I believe this live show will do this, this, and this for the world. Like you always come back to the vision of the world. And then you say, then you say the details, like it's going to pay for the lighting, this, you know, the tech guy, the this, the that. And, and so it's always back to vision and then the details, right? Interesting. Maybe my heart went straight into the details and it skipped the reasoning and the magnetism why people want to do this. And yeah. maybe maybe this is the exact mistake that many artists go for is they go so matter of fact and yes. they're not they're not getting the funding because they're not selling the vision rather than the details. Would you kind yeah. of agree? I agree. I agree one hundred percent. And they think that everyone will yawn at the vision. That's the mistake that I see a lot of artists make is like, oh, the, nobody cares about this stuff. Uh <laughs> they do. They do because they don't know what they're giving to if you don't paint the vision, right? If you don't, if because at the end of the day, an artist is standing for something and that's what they support. Unless they're another artist that relates with you, right? But mm -hmm. most other artists don't have much funds anyways because they're doing their own thing. So, I mean, depending, depending. I'm not going to generalize artists because I believe in a world where artists are abundant. Um but what I will say is that uh, if you're going to go toward people who are your super fans, right? And you talk about this. Uh, a lot of talk, people talk about this. They, they, they latch on to who you are and your vision and your brand first. And then they're like, oh, look, he's putting on a show. Oh, look, he's going to complete an album. You know, like that. that is, I mean, I hate to say it. A lot of artists don't like to hear this. But your music is a compliment. <laughs> yeah, it's not what they're following for. They follow for the brand. Yeah. And I personally think access to you is a super yeah. fan who wants the ability yeah. to be able to say, I DM them. They know me. They know who I am. They will respond to me. They will, if they will notice me, they will re reply to my comment. They want access. And they want to be able to tell their friends, oh, I know this really dope artist who's really in touch with their fans so much so here's all the messages we send each other. I think yeah. that's, in my humble opinion, the experience that people want is closeness. And I think if you can provide that by what I understand from at scale in exchange for 
a bit of cash helps me build the vision that makes the experience better, then yeah. I think people are willing to buy into that and not just one release, but buy into your career, buy, buy into your journey as well. So they're with you through the album and every future album, not just as one song at the front. How, right. how, do, how do you kind of like analyze that? How do, they, how do people crowdfund their career rather than their single? That's great. I mean, a, a great example is uh, an independent artist I follow. Her name's Leah McHenry, and she's been an artist coach uh, for a while. Um, and she just keeps in touch with her fans, even though she's like off being a business coach and she has like five kids, she homeschools, and <laughs> she's just like all these these things. But she she still keeps in touch with her fan base. And she just did, I think she's been going since 2012, and she just did a crowdfund for 100K. Wow. I mean, she did the work before to build her audience and built so much rapport that people still give her money like years later. What is it, 2024? It's more than 10 years. Mm. More than 10 years. She built her fan base back in 2012. Uh, so this is relationship. Crowdfunding is relationship. That's why I relate it to dating, right? It's you can... interesting. Do you, do you think you need a uh, a huge fan base to be able to do a crowdfunding, or can it be done with a much smaller audience? That's a great question. So I always say, instead of asking, do I need a fan base, ask the question, do I have a crowd? And a crowd could look like fans, or a crowd could look like people that have supported you, who are dedicated to your vision and who you are, your growth, your process. And that, you know, depending on who we hang out with, that could be people who have a lot of money or people who don't have a lot of money. But don't prejudge, right? People people want give them an opportunity, right? And and also don't don't pressure, right? So, so let people who, who have what they can give, give what they can. And people who have more, let them, you know, receive. I think there's this process in crowdfunding of generosity, this concept of generosity. And a lot of people know, oh, generosity means giving to others. But a lot of people don't realize generosity also means receiving. Deep. Very deep. Right. Yeah. You've got to have both in generosity. There would be no generosity if no one received anything. <laughs> the, the gratitude of acceptance as opposed to the you know, yeah. humility of giving, yeah. But I think exactly. from a social media perspective, I always analyze in many different ways, but tactfully, you can find your first 100 super fans by the people who are liking first, the people who are viewing every single story, the people who will DM you once in a while, the people who will create a moment to conversate with you without you prompting it. I think many artists, they seem to, seem to post and then ghost. But if you're seeing yeah. these same familiar names coming back over and over again, that might be a signal or an indication that they want even closer access to you. And yeah. there are obviously moments you can put them in a Facebook group, put them in a WhatsApp community, put them in a Patreon, put them in a x y and z platform that that's arbitrary i think i think right. the gathering of people is the important factor there right right and and that's what i loved about doing my crowdfund even without a fan base is i didn't even know who my people were right <laughs> plus you know uh working with you you know people can gather fans a lot faster um you know working with me as well we're going to do a lot of what you do anyways mm -hmm. right but you're going to get paid faster is kind of the idea. Like, what if you could do the work that you need to do anyways, but get paid on the front end? And the statistics that I see is the average network, um, at least in America, can bring in about 5K. That's that's what the stats show. Justin Giddings is a filmmaking crowdfunding coach, and he says that as well. Um, if you have more people on your team, you could create bigger numbers. But the average network is about 5K. And that's why I say 5K in 30 days is because 5K is the average. Now, it's not a promise, right? There's no guarantees sure. that everybody's going to... Because everybody's in a different process of their journey and communication. 
Um, but if, you know, if you're, uh, been working on your communication skills with, with you, um, if you've been working on your posting, if you've been working on your brand, like you can skyrocket a crowdfund very easily if you focus on the right things at the right time. If you edit a crazy amount of content like I do, you need an editing partner you can trust. And this is where Opus.pro comes in. This is an AI-powered text-based editing tool. So you upload a long conversation like a podcast or a YouTube video or even a performance into the system and it turns the whole video into text. And it measures what are the best parts of that piece of content and it gives you loads of micro clips for Instagram reels, TikToks and YouTube shorts. And using the power of text-based editing, you can highlight certain words and delete them. Change the color, change the fonts, change the animations and so much more. And you can do this for every video you release. You can start your trial with just 100 minutes a month and see how powerful it is and then upgrade to one of the pro memberships for starting at $19 a month. It's an incredibly powerful tool. It's how I'm seeding out so much content by making one long YouTube video and cutting that up every single week. If you want to try out Opus Pro, get started today using my link, which is opus.pro forward slash all about helping. There's a little bit of code in there. So grab the link from the description below and definitely give it a try for your first free month. I'd love to actually go really, really deep, but even okay. more granular than ever before. So like to do a 5K in 30 days process, what's the buildup like? How early do you start? What are the messages you're communicating? What's that timeline? What are the daily actionable steps? Like go right down it. the rabbit hole, please. Yeah, let's oh, start, no. start at the origin. From ideation all the way to completion. I'd sign very easily if you focus on the right things at the right time. That's what I'll say. I'd love to actually go really, really deep, but even okay. more grand- granular than ever before. So like to do a 5K in 30 days process, what's the buildup like? How early do you start? What are the messages you're communicating? What's that timeline? What are the daily actionable steps? Like go right down the rabbit hole, please. Yeah, let's oh, start, no. start at the origin. From ideation all the way to completion, please. So we, we, you know, we have many personalities represented in the artist community. So I'm going to speak to two different personalities. So number one, I'm one of those people who just like go for it and do it really messy. It's a lot harder to do it that way. Um, but I really, I, I really hold to the belief you can't mess this process up. So those perfectionists out there, um, I prepared for 15 days and then just launched because I had a deadline. So. Um, you don't have to be perfect at this preparation. However, what I will say <laughs> is it's much better if you have some time to prepare. So I suggest a month or two preparation. And what you're going to be doing is the, the, the three pillars that I teach are the sign- your signature story, really diving deep into that. Some people come to me and they already know what their signature story is. Some people come to me as like, Here's my whole life story. <laughs> We're like, okay, we need to pair this down. Built it down. Go watch. Go watch. Um, and then some people are like, I don't have a story. And I'm like, I I just don't believe that. But, but everyone we has all, a story. Everyone. Exactly. We all have a story. So that's number one is pillar one. And that's the foundation of the whole campaign. And the cool thing is, you know this, once you get it down, you just keep saying it over and over. It's an, I, I mean, you could say it for a year. And then when you release the album, you say it again for PR and yep. magazines interview you and, you know, the radio show. I mean, once you get this, this is the foundation. So that's pillar one. And then pillar two is your teams and systems. So every artist is in a different place with this. Some people have their team. They know who is backing them. Um, some people have no team. They are their team. Right. So in that case, you may want a little bit more preparation to start onboarding some people before the crowdfund starts. So there's many team members you could onboard. One could be like a producer that is so invested in what you do. They want to actually uh, share it with their friends and family on a deeper level. And they could be like more of a core team member. Um, and, I, and that term I got from Justin Giddings, who's again, a filmmaking crowdfunding coach. And then, there's your other team who are kind of your champions throughout the campaign. They're the ones who are like, I've been with him from the beginning. I know what he's about. Like, I, I want to share this. And so 
you do a little pre-launch or some phone calls before you even launch the campaign so that you have a team backing this whole process. Love okay. That. So that's team. And then you've got uh, your systems, which again, could be email, could be social media. And again, people working with you are very set up to do their crowdfund already because they've had systems in place. Some people come to me, they have no systems and are like, okay, we need to prepare a little bit. Again, going back to my story, I didn't, didn't have any system. I had social media, right? I was familiar with social media, but I, I, I didn't have any system. So it's not that you can't do this without systems. It's just systems are like, if, if your signature story is the foundation of a house, I, I, I actually give the analogy of crowdfunding is like throwing a party. Uh-huh. So if you build your ha- own house to throw a party, right? You've got to have the foundation. I think teams and systems are the walls, the structure. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. The structure of, of everything. And uh, once you have the foundation and the structure, I mean, you could have people over. You could say like, look, the house isn't finished yet, but look at this vision. So I see you. I see him for real. Definitely. Yeah. You, you could crowdfund even then if you have those two things in place. Okay. Yeah, the signature story and then teams and systems. Cool. That's the two of the yeah. pillars. The third. Yeah. The third one is actually launching your campaign. Okay. So there you go. And that's like actually throwing the party. And like I'm saying, you don't have to have all the furniture there to throw the party. Like invite a few people over anyway. Um, if you if you already have a fully decorated house, like they've done the work with you to get your, your their story down. They have some social media systems. Um, they have everything in place. You're even better in a better place to crowdfund. And the, and the first time that you did this, and I, I, you, it's funny that you talk about you're quite, uh, you know, you did it the last minute dot com the first time round. My OCD <laughs> went crazy when you said that. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm I know a fan of like structure. Like you, I can everyone, tell. Everyone knows this about me. But then I have that creative side of me as well, where my brain will procrastinate right until the last second, and then the true artist comes out. We all have that. So my question yeah. is like. Were you writing the emails each day as you were sending them? Or were you trying to write them all in advance so you had the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday system? Were you trying to design all the social media posts? Or was it the ones you needed oh, on the day was, got made on the day? It was as I went, yeah. It was wow. as I went. Uh, yes, and I, I mean, I didn't sleep very much, but I created 5K in 30 days. You know what I mean? So it just depends on the experience that you want, obviously. Um, you know... Even with clients I work with now, I'll say, okay, let's prepare. And they, they're they not in the party yet. So mm. they don't have the full picture of what to prepare even. And I say, okay, do it like this. And they'll be like, uh, I don't, I, it doesn't make sense. And then yep. they launch the crowdfund and they're like, oh, it makes sense now. <laughs> so it's funny. And I'm a huge respect and love to all of my clients, but like, I will give them all the advice on the first release. Do not film it and then edit it and post it the same day. That leads to certain anxiety and burnout. But yeah. I think you you have to sometimes make the mistake to know I'm never doing that again. And so you learn for your second release is that I'm going to have 90 days of real hustle to create this Dropbox folder full of every asset I need, every email I need way in advance before I need it. Yeah, it sounds like I, with, with your first crowdfund campaign, you have to do the doing to know what not to do maybe for future. Absolutely. Statistically, you do make more money on your second. So that there's a, there's stats out there to support this. But yeah, it, it is hard as a coach. You want to protect your clients yeah. and make sure they don't make any mistakes. And it's like at the end of the day, sometimes action is even better than action and learning is mm-hmm. better than procrastinating and doing it perfectly. Um so you know that that as a coach, right? You want to protect and make yep. sure you do it. But at the end of the day, we all got to learn. And it's even better if you learn because then you're not dependent on us. As as much as I, you know, love working with my clients, it's like you need to you need to do this for yourselves. Yeah. Um, I, I always use the analogy of uh, a personal trainer. You, you use yeah. them so you no longer need them again. Yeah, right? exactly. or a therapist. You use them so you never need a therapist ever again. 
Yeah, exactly. And it doesn't mean you're not going to come back at certain exactly. points, right? So, it's like we all hit a wall in our journey. But so that's a, a really nice segue. So what did your coach do for you at the moments you were thinking of giving up or the moments you didn't hit enough percentage of your way towards your target instantly? Yeah. How did you refocus back to the game plan and not give up on yourself? How did you like say, trust the process, just you can't, I would, you can't take your foot off the gas until you complete the required action steps to make the vision possible. So hit this many DMs per day, this many phone calls a day. Like, how did you refocus back to what you promised yourself? It's a good question. So my goal was actually to create $30,000 in my business and in the crowdfund. So my goal was actually bigger than 5K. It was 30,000 in my life over three months. And right. yeah, so so I'd never done that before. Um, about two weeks before the deadline, I was already into the crowdfund actually. I was about two weeks into the crowdfund, I think. I, um, I think I had raised maybe 2,000 for the crowdfund. And then I was about at 10K overall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> out of 30,000. And I was like, you know what? 10k is pretty good. Uh 2k is pretty good. I've never done any of this before, so I'm I'm this is great. And my coach just was like, yeah, great. Um this is this is probably about what you could handle, right? Cuz we always make what we can handle. Yes. Right? So the life that we have right now is what we can handle. <laughs> But she can. She said, "So you can you can stay here, or you can use the support that you have from me and this community. We had a whole community doing different goals. You can use the support and momentum that you have in place and go to the next level." That's the and best bit of advice you probably needed. Yes, it was. And then she said she took it further. She said, "I want you to imagine that." Your little nephew, and this is a trigger warning. This will be triggering. Uh, your little nephew, who was two at the time, was kidnapped and held at gunpoint. Mm. And you had to come up with $20,000 in two weeks. What would you do? And I was like, well, I'd call everybody I know. And that's what got me over the line. Mm -hmm. I've heard a very similar analogy before. <laughs> where they call, yeah. it the, they call it the prison dilemma, right? Yeah. So if, you were, if you were locked in prison with nothing except a phone and a laptop, and if you were told you had to make X amount of money, call it 10000 50000 to escape, you would do nothing else except try and escape. So why is it that when we're in the real world and we have the luxury of everything, we don't use that hustle? I think not to say we self-sabotage, but we coast. As artists, yeah. as human beings, like we sometimes just post through i don't need to work that hard it will come eventually whereas when you have 24 hours a day locked up and you desperately want your freedom you give it your everything yeah so i love this advice exactly. the nephew analogy yeah bit morbid <laughs> but uh yeah but i like the way that you, it gave you true focus it did it, it really snapped it created urgency and i have this saying for for artists doing crowdfunding connection Plus urgency equals currency. Brilliant. That is the strength of a crowdfund because if you just are dripping, you know, social media posts throughout the year and there's no urgency, there's no deadline, there's no specific thing that you're casting vision for and there's a deadline, a lot of people will be like, oh, I'll support them eventually or uh, maybe, you know, one day. Um, but the crowdfund gives a lot of urgency and the cool thing is uh, i'm 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 uh, working with another partner who launches the crowdfund and memberships at the same time so you can do a follow-up campaign with memberships on top of just the crowdfund so the goal is that that you get paid as an artist right uh, the slow drip is is so exhausting <laughs> it's it can be exhausting at least. And it, it it's not to say it's not worth it because it is because you have to have connection first. So that slow drip 
building connection, so worth it. But there comes a time where you need urgency, like Hmm. not pressure, but urgency for people. And how do you create urgency? You dive back into connection. This is the vision I have for the world. It's It's cyclical. cyclical. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and you keep, you keep going in that process. You're going to create money. So random question that out of the blue is, does the platform matter? Is it a Kickstarter? Is it a Patreon? Is it like your own website? Is it PayPal? Is it Monzo? Like what is the system and the platform that you advise or does it even matter at all? That's a great question too. So the, the company I was mentioning before that launches both a crowdfund and memberships, that's Rocket Fuel. And uh, I love that because you do the crowdfund and then even if you don't hit your goal, you launch your memberships and sometimes people want the memberships and they want like access to you monthly, right? Which is like Patreon. So it's basically like Kickstarter and Patreon all in one. I love that because you can have a follow-up campaign. Now you could also use, you know, Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and then do a Patreon in multiple different, or Bandcamp, you know, um, there, there's multiple things you could use. Uh, but that's why I like Rocket Fuels because it's all in one place, which Makes is sense. very cool. Makes sense. Um, yeah. And so, uh, but besides Rocket Fuel, because uh, with both Rocket Fuel um, and Indiegogo on a flexible goal, you can receive the funds whether you hit the goal or not. I think that is the most important thing is that you are able to receive the funds whether you hit the goal or not, especially if you're a beginning artist and you're just starting. Uh, make sure that you're on a flexible goal. Rocket Fuel is automatically a flexible goal. You'll receive the funds. Indiegogo, you have to select it. So for those reasons, I choose Indiegogo and and Rocket Fuel. Um, Kickstarter, actually, I I learned it so you don't have to. I didn't receive the funds because I didn't hit my goal. That so- was my next question. So if you, <laughs> if you set a target and if people uh, pledge or donate, if you don't reach yeah. that ultimate target where everyone gets refunded and the, the money never leaves their account, is that how I'm understanding it? That's scary. Yeah. It is it is scary, and that's why a lot of artists are scared to do crowdfund, but that's why I say do a flexible goal. Kickstarter is great if you have a fan base and like you want that urgency. Hey, guys, I don't receive any money unless we hit this goal, but you need a fan. You need like people backing you up mm. with that process, especially if you're in the beginning stages flexible goal um if you have any trepidation behind crowdfunding flexible goal just peace of mind like it's it's gonna come to your account (laughs) i think that that transparency of the revenue target and the progression towards it is important so i've seen you know people use an instagram broadcast channel for this where it's the one to many comms but they can't communicate back except by emojis and i think it's like we you know we're we're at 6k off the total 10k keep keep spreading the word keep spreading the word yeah we're at 7k we're at 8k we're at 9k and i like this from my perspective this whole accountability of help me get to this final target guys either number one so i'll get all the funds because i don't otherwise or number two i want to back the vision make this a goal come to life but i've perfectly mapped out the funds i need to make this happen Yep. I like this aspect. Rather than making money money a taboo subject that we don't talk about, I almost right. I've learned it very recently in the last two years or so is being really forthcoming with money and like not shying away from conversations about it because it's what drives the world. And everyone can relate to the fact that you're working to, towards something. I can do a small five or ten dollar donation yeah. just to help you out, and it won't cost you much. You know, you're going to lose your life over this 5 or $10. Yeah. And I, I think communicating that to your audience is really important. Saying, hey, uh, even a little bit goes a long way. It, there's no small donation here. There's no small support because you mean the world to me. Like, it, all of it counts. All of it counts. And, um, you know, you can even break it up the math. And, and I've heard this before. Um if you walk into a room, someone will be the more comfortable person talking about money. It'll either be you or someone else. Try to make it you because then your missions can come to life. Missions take funding. 
right? If you're on a mission, it takes funding. So, so let it be you, first of all, let you be the one, the most comfortable talking about it. And second, break it down for people. Hey, if we have 50 people give up their coffee this week, we can make our goal, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Like, um, I, I, with the client I'm working with now, a lot of people are donating 200, like $200 is like the most popular. Yeah. Those are like the super fan, like they want to support, um, and they're they're saying, okay, if they have fifty people donate two hundred dollars, they'll reach ten k. Like, how that's cool is that? That's just crazy. That math people. is amazing. Yeah. So so do the math for. I'm not a math person, <laughs> so a little bit more of a stretch for me. But we all have a calculator. Like we can we can be creative with this, right? I absolutely so, love that last point. And he said, yeah, just communicate how much you need, why it's important, how you're going to get there. Yeah. I've absolutely loved this. Thank you so much. Yeah. And you're can people connect with you? Where can they like follow your socials, even book in a Calendly meeting with you? Like feel free to give it a plug. Yeah. So, so you can find me on Instagram. I'm pretty uh, active there. Jess living to the fullest. Jess, J-E-S-S, living to the fullest. And you can also find me, you can email me. It's coaching at jessevaallen.com. That's my website, jessevaallen.com. Uh, on YouTube, I'm on uh, Facebook as well. And uh, Jesse Allen Studio is my original studio. So I go by two different names, Jess Eva Allen, Jesse Allen. Maybe one day I'll change it. Um, but you can find me on both both those things. Nope. Uh Thank you so and much for dropping then, gems. You've been sharing yeah. unbelievable knowledge. I deeply appreciate you. Yeah, and maybe we can put the Calendly link uh, as well. Absolutely. So you can definitely book. I, I, I Because you guys are a part of um, AIS's group and community, I am offering uh, a free 45-minute consultation with me uh, to you and your community. Grateful. So where we can map out, yeah, your next crowdfund, basically, in this session. So definitely uh, take advantage of that. I'll put that link in your... Absolutely. Don't share it. Dude, you're the best. Thank you so much. Thank you.